players. The Princess Royal Open women's singles, Dimchenko from Azerbaijan and Kola, USA. Slightly shaky first stroke there from Dimchenko. Not quite fully connected to the water, but she really moved on to that second and third stroke and is now punching out some long and powerful uh, moves there as she goes down to the end of the island. Cara Kola from the USA has just crept out a bit into the middle of the river and I think she had some problems with steering in uh, some of her earlier races actually as well. So it's going to be important for her not to make this course any longer than it needs to be. We're going to see the other side of the draw in this event shortly. Um, so the question is who's going to go through to compete in the finals day tomorrow at Henley? Pretty much even at the moment, I think, Dimchenko uh, has been quite a strong starter here. Um, and, well, Kola here is taking it to her. You can see the water quite tricky for both of these scullers. Just watch the handles of those skulls as they go in, sometimes going at different heights as the boat rocks and rolls through some of the wash. Quite a lot of pleasure cruisers out this weekend, paddle steamers and people enjoying the spectacle. That's one of the things that makes Henley unique, but it also makes it more challenging for the competitors, particularly in these smaller boats. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things about rowing the single, because it's smaller, because there's less weight, there's less momentum. If you do get hit by a wave, it can really stop your progress. But look at this lead that Dimchenko is starting to open out now. This is a sculler who is, let's not forget, a coastal rowing world champion. So maybe this slightly rougher water, a bit of wash, that might really work in her favor. She loves the waves and it's certainly some waves here and she's had some waves from the crowd yesterday. One of the things she most enjoyed, she tells us, was the um, the applause and the appreciation from the, cloud, the crowds here at Henley and for many of the rowers, potentially the closest and largest cloud, crowd watching you. And Jimchenko at the moment, well, she seems to be sculling a bit longer perhaps and a bit more confidently as you said so picking out that sort of coastal rowing you deal with a lot more swell and roll than uh, than you do here at henley yeah cora cola looking relatively relaxed but you just did see that little glance over the shoulder and i wonder what she's thinking is she thinking oh i wasn't really expecting her to be there i was well, expecting yeah. her to be behind me already so is she going to have to do a little bit more now to get back onto terms with Dimchenko? Just picking up you there, I think um, what that glance tells me is that she's lost sight of the stern post of the boat when she's facing forward. So that means that uh, Dimchenko's slipping out of view. And that makes it difficult. When you can see while you're just facing normally your opponents, you know where they are and you can just focus on the process. If you have to start looking around, you know, that's disruptive. She looks around again to see where she is. She knows she's in touch. So the question is, does she attack now? Or does she just try to row her rhythm and rely on fitness and um, efficiency through the middle of the course? Yeah, absolutely, Matt. And to some extent, just rely on sort of a bit, a bit of pig-headedness and determination and just, I guess, a bit of bravery to just say, well, I'm going to row my rhythm. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm confident in that. So we're in the second quarter of this semi-final of the Princess Royal Challenge Cup. Um, this is an event that was begun in 1993 in honor of Princess Anne, regular visitor over the years to Henry Royal Regatta, held by Laura Anderson of Leander. 23 women singles entered this event, 16 qualified to race, and we're now down to the final four, two now, two in a couple of races time, and at the moment it's still Timchenko, but she's not managed to open up a significantly wider gap than the first kind of quarter of the race, so I think, you know, so this is interesting. Is this a consolidation to the 500 metres before a real push and a battle towards the finish? Yeah, she's not opened up, but she, I really like the style that she rows with. You know, her blades are very neat into the water. There's not much splash at either end of the stroke. Again, it's that efficiency that we were talking about earlier. And I'd say that on paper, we would probably say that Cara Cola should be the one in charge of this race. You know, she's a bronze medalist in the women's squad, mind you, from London 2012, so a few years ago now. But uh, Diana Dimchenko, by comparison, she hasn't raced internationally yet this season. She will be at World Cup 3 at the Lakes of the Gods in Lucerne just next week. But Cara Cola, ninth in the women's single in Tokyo, I believe currently racing in the women's double for the US. So, perhaps a bit of a turnover here? Well, let's see. We know Cola loves to be here at Henley Regatta. Her first race in the sculling boat was at Henley Royal Regatta in 2011. You mentioned her participation in the 2012 Games uh, in UK in London. Um, so she loves to be out in the single and loves to be on the track here. As you say, I think you're absolutely spot on with Jim Temko. Look at her, nicely steering, keeping the 
Um, distance from her skulls to the little booms on the right, absolutely stable all the way down the course, steering a dead straight course despite quite swirling and often crosswinds here. And she's in exactly the position you want to be. She can just see her opponent, but it looks at the moment, look at that indicator on the three-quarter mile stage. It shows that in, um, that Cara Kola has eaten back into that lead. Yeah. She's no longer glancing over that shoulder. I, just as you said, Matt, earlier on, you know, she now is maybe able to see a little bit more of the disruption from Dimchenko's boat alongside her. She can see some of the swirls of her puddles and she's gonna be knowing because she can suddenly see that again, that she has momentum. And look at this now, she is moving through Dimchenko. She's almost level now. Yeah, she glances across, but she doesn't need to look back anymore because she can now see the stern post of Dimchenko. She is moving maybe 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters a stroke at the moment. Kara Gola showing her Henley experience over the coastal rowing experience that serves Dimchenko so well in the early part of the races and Kola is moving she's moving she is moving yeah Cara Kola now with that higher rate getting in those extra strokes but still managing to keep things quite long she's got that power through the water you saw her glance over at Dimchenko again she is still moving every single stroke now she obviously decided at some point in the last minute right this is time i've got to do something now to get myself back ahead and she has done it they're approaching the mile signal you can see it there to the left of your picture that is 1609 meters from the start just before the enclosures you've still got another 500 meters to go so that's really the 500 meters mark that these two are going to be used to well that's a real turnover and you can see Dimchenko I think she's been broken by that burst hasn't she she's just had to slow right down she's spent she hasn't got anything to respond with and this is the mentality in single scaling she's got to talk to herself pick herself up but look at that she's her limbs have turned to jelly that is a massive turnaround she looks like a completely different athlete the one that you saw a few minutes ago she looks like she's really struggling now like you say just to keep moving well, what an amazing, bold charge from the experienced Carla Kola from the USA. She pushed and she pushed, and we suddenly saw her eating back at a really incredible rate through Dimchenko. Dimchenko had nothing left to answer with that. That, you know, very strong start, which we were impressed by, cost her dearly. Now, umpire Gwyn Batten raises her right arm and warns Cara Kola for her steering. She's not allowed to come out of her station. There's a risk that she impedes the other sculler, but she's responded pretty well. I think Cara Kola now, has, having put in that bit of work there to just break through Dimchenko, now looks like she's actually sort of maybe settled the rate down a fraction and is looking to just keep drawing away. A little bit of a wobble there from Dimchenko that we saw just struggling now, perhaps with the tightness in the limbs and the fatigue really setting in as they come into this last minute or 90 seconds of racing. So wherever you're watching, whenever you're watching in the world, if you want to understand the psychology of sculling, well, here it is, you know, really strong, bold, aggressive start from the Azerbaijani Dimchenko. Uh, and she was hoping to pull away. It looked like she had that commanding position, but brave and experienced Cara Kola from the USA. Bided her time, she got into that difficult middle of the course, which is quite a long period. And she attacked really hard. It was a big gamble. She threw everything at it but it's a gamble that absolutely paid off in spades and Dimchenko had nothing to give. She'd done too much too soon and nowhere to go. Absolutely right, Matt. That patience has really worked here for Kola. But you can see now the top of the pic picture, Diana Dimchenko currently racing, racing for Azerbaijan, formerly of the Ukraine. She's just slipping out of shot as Kara Kola of the USA skulls down towards the finish line, moving away every stroke now from Dimchenko. So scholars around the world, if you're aspiring to be a single scholar, if you are and you want to get better, look at how this race has panned out. Absolutely no shame for Dimchenko. You want to be crossing the line spent if you're not winning. And she gave it her all. She, she played out her race plan, but credit to Cara Kola, a really impressive, mature skull attacking through the middle of the course and breaking through her opponent in epic style. Congratulations, Cara Kola, booking a place tomorrow in the Princess Royal final, beating Dimchenko from Azerbaijan in a very memorable race. What an overturn. That's two really gladiatorial races in the singles that we've seen. Look, you see there, Cara Kola glancing over at Dimchenko, Dimchenko looking back. Fantastic race between two really powerful athletes.